Howdy folks! Welcome back to the Steampunk Test Route channel. On this week's menu is, surprise, Steampunk! Yes, we talked about a classic sci-fi series last time, and this time we are back to Steampunk. And I have spoken about this particular series before in my video on best Steampunk series. And like many of those series, it is a YA, a young adult. Unlike Leviathan by Scott Westerfeld, which was clearly a YA, and the Mortal Engine series, it's a series of shorter books, but a much longer series. It has a female-centric storyline, as a lot of these do, but in an old-fashioned, empowering sort of way. It's not a man-hating, you know, we-don't-need-you sort of resentful ideology. I'm talking about the Magnificent Devices series by Shelley Adina Bates. I have not read this entire series by Shelley Adina, and that's her pen name. I assume Adina Bates is probably her married name. Anyway, I have read the first ten, and there are anywhere between 13 and 21, <laughs> depending upon how you count it. And so some of them are short stories that she published separately and then later collected, and there is an additional series that occurs afterwards called The Regent's Devices, which are four novels in that one, and it is sometimes counted along with this one. So that's how you get to 21, uh, if you count those. I haven't read any of those. So the thing I do like about uh, Ms. Adina the best is that she didn't get the memo that steampunk was out of fashion, that you weren't supposed to write it anymore. She just kept doing it. Yay for her! So this series, like a lot of good steampunks, tar starts or takes place or begins in London in the late 1800s. But it's a somewhat altered technological and political universe, as it always is in steampunk. And when I said this was female-centric, I meant that the major characters are pretty much all female, although there are some important male characters as well. The main protagonist is Lady Claire Trevelyan, and she begins as a teenager. So, being this is a YA, your protagonist is supposed to be a teenager or a very young adult, right? Lady Clare hails from an aristocratic English family that's hit some very unfortunate times. Her father was investing in a scheme called the Arabian Bubble. <laughs> well, now it's a bubble <laughs> because they were trying to harvest oil out of Arabia and for whatever reason it failed. And he had a lot of people he brought in on him or a lot of people he recommended and all these investors are howling for his blood. And so he's, he's broke, he has them after him, and he takes the coward's way out. Kind of a dark start for a YA. Nonetheless, it does have, it, it can include adult themes, right? Anyway, so this leaves Claire, who is presently, I believe, 17, and her mother and her baby brother abandoned on their own with this mob outside the mansion. So her mother decides she's going to leave and take the baby to Cornwall, and which where they have another house. She leaves Claire to handle this stuff. She's supposed to talk to lawyers and crap like that. Well, but this poor girl, she's like 17, and uh, she doesn't know what how to handle this, and pretty soon the mob breaks down the front door and starts coming in and looting the place. So she escapes. She takes the family's vehicle, which they call a steam landau, I love the name, and she takes that vehicle out to a bad part of London where she is accosted by some juvenile criminals, uh, some young boys and girls who are out on the streets. They call them street sparrows is what the terminology is. And she convinces them that she's wants to help them and they shouldn't like beat her up or anything like that and they become her new extended family for the remainder of the series, basically. Claire, of course, as you might expect, has a brilliant mind, and it's both her blessing and her curse. 
she wants to attend the university for engineering, but it's something that women just don't do at this time. And her parents were dead set against it. Of course, now her father is just dead, <laughs> so he has nothing to say, and her mother has abandoned her. So she could go if she had any money, <laughs> which she doesn't, and she is living with these uh, abandoned children whom she feels obliged to help support. It also happens that luck is on their side because one of the one of the young kids that they have adopted into this group turns out to be not an orphan, but his parents are alive. He's the son of these rich people, the Dunsmuirs. They've been looking for him. They return him to his grateful parents and they are now willing to kind of help out these kids. I'm going to go over these books one by one but because they're kind of short, because I've read some of them a while back, and because the reviews never tell you very much, I'm going to be a little bit sloppy on what is in what. <laughs> the first book, called Lady of Devices, is published in 2011, and, and like all of these are from Moonshell Books, which is basically Adina's own little publishing outfit. And uh, that first book, Lady of Devices, uh, takes place beginning in 1889. Claire is like 17, and it, it introduces all that stuff I told you about, all the backstory that, that establishes the series. And besides this, she meets a young, handsome, dashing scientist called Andrew Melbourne, and he's one of the few that doesn't mind that a girl has interest in science. And so, you might think there's a little bit of a romantic thing that's going to start, and you'd be right. Anyway, as the books go on, a number two, Her Own Devices, they rescue a female inventor from the Bedlam Mental Hospital uh, because a man stole her invention and uh, put her away there to get her out of the way. And they, she invented the lightning rifle, which turns out is going to be Claire's weapon of choice. And she can use it to dispatch some evil underground crit criminals, which is what she does a little later. Uh, number three, Magnificent Devices. Uh, they have an airship voyage with the Dunsmuirs, the Earl of Dunsmuir, Lady Dunsmuir, and the young Duns Dunsmuir <laughs> to the Canadas, uh, which is part of the British Empire. And uh, there's a narrow scrape with the air pirates and so on. Uh, the number four book is Brilliant Devices, in which they are still in the Canadas and they're visiting the Dunsmuir's Diamond Mines up there in Alberta, I think. Uh, anyway, um, and this is where I believe they, I don't remember where they first encountered them, but there's this heiress uh, named Gloria Merriweather Astor, and she's from Philadelphia. Uh, this Annie Oakley type called Alice Chalmers, who is my favorite character. And she's like this mechanical genius who's invented an autopilot for the airship. Now, people who are from a farm background may know that Alice Chalmers is a brand of tractor, or at least it was when I was a kid. And I think we even had one, which, so I love this. It's hilarious. I don't know if uh, Ms. Adina is aware of that. Probably. She seems to have a bit of a rural background. But getting back to uh, book five, A Lady of Resources, time has passed. Claire is now in her 20s. The twins, the Mopsies, are now 16, and they're getting to where, you know, boys. And boys are interested in them, too, because they're these pretty young blondes. And they're also very smart. And so here they encounter some interesting things about their background. They discover that uh, the Maupassant, who is supposedly their father, was a criminal. <laughs> and he's dead. But they do have grandparents, and so which, which is wonderful. They're the Seacombs. They were the, the mother's parents, and they are overjoyed to find these girls. Number six, A Lady of Spirit, in which Maggie and Lizzie start out visiting with the grandparents, and they meet their brother Claude, who is a real character. He's one of these kind of he's kind of a dandy, but he's but he's a good guy, and uh, they get involved in kind of smuggling conspiracy. Uh, number seven involves my favorite, Alice Chalmers, the, the spunky, feisty Texican. <laughs> I love her accent. Uh, and uh, she is 
has her own airship company and she was in the Duchy of Venice where she her ship was impounded because they hit her with these transit fees that she couldn't pay and they took her her uh, number one airman Jake who was one of the kids uh, but now as her employee they took him pris prisoner and put him in this horrible underwater prison and so they have to help Alice who has escaped but they have to help her rescue poor Jake before this horrible work underwater kills him. And number eight, a gentleman of means. And I'm not quite sure which gentleman this means. On the cover, on the cover there's always a character, and until this book it's always been a woman, which we assume is either Claire or one of the Mopsies or you know, or perhaps Gloria, I don't know. And in, in any way this case, it's uh, Tig. He's one of the street sparrows, now grown up, now a licensed airman with the Royal Aeronautic Corps. But Tig doesn't have financial means, so it could be Alice Chalmers' fiancé, Captain Ian Hollies, who was the airship captain for the Dunsmuirs, who is wealthy. This follows with a so-called novella, which is actually a short story, a Christmas story called Devices Brightly Shining, released in 2015. Uh, and the final one that I've read is Fields of Air, number 10, involving the wonderful Alice Chalmers, uh, Evan Douglas, who is a cousin of the Mopsies, and uh, Gloria, of course. And so, there are a handful of other books uh, in this particular series, Fields of Iron, number 11, Fields of Gold, number 12, I assume that's probably with California, uh, number 13, there was a compilation of some of the other stories which can make bring it out to 17. After that, there are four books in the Regents Devices series, which they skip back in time and go back to the Regents era. Now, those of you who are men will probably say, what the heck is that? What the heck? Isn't that, isn't that like a Buick? <laughs> well, no. They're referring to the Regency era of Britain, which came before the Victorian era. And this was a time when King George III, as all we Americans know, he was the king during the Revolution, he went mad, and his son George IV had to take over, but George III was still alive for ten years, so his son was actually called Regent. And so there are a lot of period romances set in this era. Why, I don't know. I think women love the costumes, and I think there's also the fact that Jane Austen was alive at this time. And so a lot of those Jane Austen books, which women uh, who are into any kind of literature will really love, I think that's why this became, you know, Sense and Sensibility, all this stuff, um, became kind of the model for a lot of modern period romance. But there's four books in the Regents Devices series. I'm going to put them up here on the screen so you can see them. I haven't read any of those. So now it's time for the pros and cons. So, uh, pros. First one, interesting characters. Uh, they are flawed and human, and they do grow. They do have a character arc, which is a missing link in a lot of modern fiction. And so they're fun, they're endearing, and they have great names, like Alice Chalmers. And I also love those nicknames, uh, Tiggs, Snouts, the Mopsies. <laughs> I love those names. This very English dialogue with all this English slang is so much fun, and and all this like peek into English culture, like you know they're celebrating Twelfth Night uh, as much so as actual Christmas. In fact, I think it was a bigger shindig than actual Christmas at the time. Although it is feminist and girl power, I think one of the reviewers called it anti-sexist. They're basically a positive view of feminism. It's like. Yeah, we want equality, and we don't hate men. We like men. We love men, in fact, specific men. And uh, they can be our partners. And I like that. I like that very positive view of it. Um, and in fact, she has a fair number of traditional values being espoused. Uh, Claire attends church regularly. <laughs> They're married in a church. <laughs> There's a lot of about the traditional values. In fact, that's one of the ahistorical things about steampunk is that they often try to put our own modern sexual mores impose that on the Victorian era. They're very into propriety and uh, you know you can't stay in the same house with your fiance 
even if even if you're going to be married soon, and even if it's like a mansion, I've got 50 rooms, and you're staying in the opposite wing, you have to be staying in a different house because you're it's improper. That's very appropriate at the time. I mean, Victorian era is you're either very proper or you're very kinky, or very perverted. To be be perfectly honest, there was a very seamy underbelly to the society, but this isn't in this book, and that's just fine. There is adventure. There's a lot of great adventure. Uh, you know, they're going places around the world. They're getting shot at. They're shooting back. At one point, Claire has to kill a guy <laughs> in self-defense. But 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 seriously, it's not like it's not like they're wimps or wusses or anything like that. And uh, there is some diversity, but it's not excessive. It's not in the really crazily unrealistic way that it is these days. There is Tig. He's a mixed race character, uh, and uh, he encounters some prejudice, not much. But at one point, I believe it's Claire's mother who refers to him as a blackamoor. <laughs> that, that is such a funny term. It's probably proof. It's probably offensive, but uh, you know, at least it's not the N word. I can say it on here. Uh, so anyway, he is he is the diverse character, and he's in love with the Mopsy Lizzie, so they have this little relationship that you'd have expected a little bit more pushback uh, from that, of that, especially, maybe it's more of a class thing because he's, he's, uh, you know, he's been abandoned and he's from the lower classes, but nonetheless, you don't see much of that. Occasionally you see some historical characters, which I always love, in particular Count Zeppelin, and um, I think they mention Edison, I think Edison appears. I'm not quite sure. Prince Edward and Queen Victoria, of course. And so, you know, you have the Royal Society and all these things that appear. They have a slightly modified historical version, which is kind of fun, uh, with the USA being the 15 colonies and so on. And uh, they refer to things as the Canadas or the Californias or the Russias, which I find to be hilarious. And so it's, it definitely is absorbing, and you definitely get to care about the characters. Now on the cons, it is aimed largely at girls, obviously. They have a strong romantic interest, and uh, you have a lot of description of fashion and, uh, you know, dra ladies' dress and accessories and so on. And uh, be being she's written historical romance, I'm sure Ms. Adina has a lot of knowledge of this. But I think it would be—I think it'd be off-putting to a boy. I mean, I'm, I'm, since I'm an adult, I have the patience for that, and in fact, I find it kind of interesting. But I think it would turn a lot of boys off, and that's too bad because I think more boys need to be reading. Some of the themes are a little bit repetitive. The most repetitive one: friend in danger. <laughs> friend in danger. We have to rescue the friend, and it. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, a lot of series work well on this kind of theme, but you might think it's not quite as creative as it could be. Another repetitive theme is the bad father. <laughs> now, I've said it isn't anti-male, but there are a lot of bad fathers in this book, and I don't know if that says anything about Ms. Adina's life, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, Claire's father basically takes the coward's way out. There is uh, Tig's deadbeat dad, and... Uh, Lizzie's father was a criminal. Gloria's father is a kind of a criminal mastermind. <laughs> and and uh, Alice's father is a an airship pirate, although he's not a bad person. He kind of he kind of reforms you know, later on. And he kind of reforms. I think he's married to a native woman and they, they have a new family and stuff. I forget, but anyway. <laughs> bad dads, definitely. And so all the girls are scientists, pretty much. I mean, I know that women can be very good at science, but having them all be into science is, is probably as unrealistic as having all the men be into science. You know, a lot of men are into sports and stuff like that, or business and whatnot. And uh, no, the girls are all pretty much into s some form of research. There are, are some female antagonists. But they are mostly just catty, bitchy types. <laughs> Judgmental, kind of like Claire's mother. But none of the female antagonists are interesting. They're, 
None of them are evil geniuses or, or assassins. Like that's one of my favorite characters in in uh, the uh, Ministry of Peculiar Occurrences series is the Sofia del Morte, the assassin. I mean, she's sexy and dangerous. I don't recall anything like that in this one. So in general, I'm not going to rate them all because there are so many of them, and, and they go up and down. There's times when I found them a little, found parts of them a little tedious, but for the most part, they held my attention. So, general rating, overall rating, four. Four out of five gears. Uh, some are a little better than others. Uh, some of the romance stuff I wasn't into. But nonetheless, I highly recommend it, uh, especially to, you know, teenage girls. It's fantastic. You're not going to have a lot of degeneracy in here. <laughs> you have a lot of uh, inspiring stuff in, in the sense that you are, you know, you're saying, here, be yourself. Find your purpose. Oh, and I really like that. I really admire that. And that's the kind of literature that, that young people should be reading. Seriously. So let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Please check out my books on Amazon. I'll put some in the list below. I am working on some new ones. Please uh, like and subscribe because that helps us get out the good steampunk word. For now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying, Adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.